So good evening, everyone, and you're all very welcome to this, the 11th annual John Paul II Award Ceremony here in the Diocese of Kildare and Lachlan. This year, things are obviously a little different, as many of you are joining us virtually via iCatholic, but I also welcome all the award leaders who are joining us physically here in the, uh, the Cathedral of the Assumption of Our Lady here in Carlo. No pandemic would ever stop this ceremony happening. No pandemic would ever stop us celebrating the beauty that is our young people and the things and the achievements that they have achieved over this past year in our diocese. So we're delighted to be celebrating 403 young people who have partaken in the life of the parish, in the life of the diocese, both in ministry level, but also socially. So it's a great achievement and we congratulate each and every one of you. The ceremony tonight is a little different to perhaps how it normally would be, but we hope you do enjoy the evening. And as always, we begin this evening with a prayer. And we're very conscious of what's happening in the world at the moment. We're very conscious of what's happening all over the world and indeed very much here in our diocese and also in our country. So our prayer this evening focuses on the COVID-19 pandemic. And we pray for everyone who has been affected by this pandemic. So as you're joining us here in the cathedral, we pray together. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to healthcare workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love, so that together we may give glory to your holy name. St. Bridget, pray for us. St. Conleth, pray for us. St. Lazarian, pray for us. And John Paul II, pray for us. The main reason we are gathered here this evening is the legacy of Pope St. John Paul II, how he influenced so many young people during his pontificate. Even when he came to the shores of Ireland this day in 1979, he told the young people in Galway, young people of Ireland, I love you. So we are still celebrating that great love that he has for us. His ability to express that love to the young people, his, his ability to express the love of God, the love that God has for his beloved children. So we watch now a brief history of the life of John Paul II, the main reason we are gathered in this beautiful cathedral this afternoon.
So now I invite forward some of our award leaders from across the diocese who are going to join us to explain a little bit about their involvement in the award, how they first got involved in the award, and how they continue to be involved in the award, and how they see the award play out in their parish. So joining me now, we have Roisin from Allen Parish, we have Nicola from the parish of Grey Cullen and Collection, and we have Michelle from the parish of Staplestown and Caleira. So you're very welcome. I feel like I'm blessed among women. <laughs> so it's great to be able to, and thank you so much uh, for joining us. Roisin, I know that you've been involved in the award a long time. It was actually your own children that got you involved in the award, and their involvement brought you into the award. Am I right? I get what. Um, I got involved 10 years ago at the second year of the awards. My son got involved in Allen Parish through Aisha Wise and Father Moore. And um, just to see the change in the young people at the time, they became more confident, you know, just being able to take part in their parish. To have the older people kind of see the younger people getting involved and to see kind of intergenerational, you know, social uh, communication going on between them. And the older people love to see the younger people getting involved. And it kind of went from there. Um, I have five children, so four of them have already gone through. Um, Pope John Paul and the fifth has actually signed up for this year. Oh, excellent. So they've all got great benefits out of it, yeah. Excellent. And Nicola, I know you yourself, you did the award uh, not too long ago. <laughs> um, and now you're, this is your first full year as an award leader. Yeah, this is my first year as an award leader um, in my parish, and I love it. Um, it's great to have come through the award because I suppose as kind of with ministry, being able to kind of showcase that to young people and show that it's great to be involved in that, you know, you can have kind of a faith element to it as well as getting to know different people. And just, I suppose, knowing that there are so many different elements to the award that they can start off and they can achieve their bronze, silver, gold, and kind of amount then to the paper cross awards. And we always try, I suppose, to have such a faith element naturally enough with the awards, but to kind of keep our young people involved as well and to really kind of reiterate that it is, although schools are brilliant and we're so blessed to have them, it really is a parish award because that's, you know, you could complete it, you couldn't complete it without the parish involvement and we're so, I suppose, blessed that our young people do give back so much in the parish and I do think that they have a great faith at the end of it. Um, they're definitely different young people um, at the end of the wars, um, I suppose, the start, and that is down to, I suppose, the ministries that we're able to offer them and then the faith that they achieve through that as well. I know there's, there's so much growth from when they start to when they finish the award and, you know, their confidence really grows and also their ability to express their faith. Yeah, it's I a, think it's a real so, beautiful definitely. thing. That's really beautiful. Michelle, I know this is your second year involved in the award and you had a great start, yeah. I know, with Lords, going to Lords a couple of years ago and how have you found the John Paul Award? How has that affected your parish in Saber St. Uh, we just started two years ago, so we were a little bit late to the scene. It was our parish priest, Father Jimmy Doyle, who asked myself and another girl to go to a meeting in Port Leash where we were totally overwhelmed, hadn't a clue about anything when we came out of it. And then once we got involved and started to get things up and running, uh, we could see how much we could do, how much we could get the, the young people involved in the parish. And then, as you mentioned, that year we actually went on the um, diocesan pilgrimage to Lourdes, and that was when we co-opted a, a third leader on board as well. So there's three of us leaders now. And in the parish, the JP2s are held, held in very high esteem. And the, as the girls were saying, the older people love to see the younger ones helping out, being involved in the church. We have little name badges on them, so they're easy to identify as well. And they love, you know, getting that little bit of recognition. And the other thing is that for the younger children in the parish, they see these teenagers and looking really good and really cool. And here they are, they're at the church, they're reading at mass, they're setting up before mass, they're cleaning up after, they're helping people maybe in and out of the church, all of these sort of things. So much so that during the year, one of the primary schools in the parish, and we're very parish based, we don't have any involvement really from the secondary schools, but in the parish during the year, the children had to do a project on either um, a bishop or a pope. So two of the boys picked um, Pope John Paul II, and we were sent a um, picture of their project afterwards, and they'd given all the detail about Pope John Paul, like we've seen tonight, and then they started to talk about the JP2s in our parish, and they said that when they get older, they want to be JP2s. So that kind of spoke volumes for us, I suppose. And I believe you call those young people the John Paul ones. We do. They're <laughs> the JP1. They go around, we fill up the bags of litter in the parish, and then they go around with my dad, actually, and they pick them up and dispose of them out. 
doctors. So they're the JP ones. Yeah. That's excellent. <laughs> That's excellent. And like and the, the witness that you were saying that these young people have, not just to the elderly, and it's great to see young people being involved, but the witness to young people is absolutely fantastic. And people wanting to grow up and become a John Paul II student. I it's mean, such positive role yeah. models, such good yeah. role models. That's fantastic. And I know this year, of course, things changed drastically in March. And I know many of you, the award kind of, they would have had their hours done already yeah. by March. But I know especially in Sable Sound Clara and Grey Cullen, when it came to the lockdown, the, the, the students really came into their own, didn't they? Yeah, they definitely did. Um, in our parish, um, young people really stepped up, I suppose, and really took the next element, I suppose, to the award, and that was as stewards. Um, and they loved it. They loved being able to greet the elderly people that were eventually coming back to Mass. And it kind of gave them that leadership role as well to kind of those who have done the gold and the paper cross, that they are furthering, I suppose, their faith and furthering their, I suppose, leadership in the parish as well. Um, so that was brilliant to see. They really kind of took... I mm. suppose, light of everything that we've been kind of showcasing them and really kind of put that into action in stewarding um, during lockdown, after lockdown. My favourite thing I saw on the Great Cullen Collection Facebook page is our young people are going back to school, um, therefore we're not, we're not going to be able to have mass unless the older people now <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> so it's fantastic that the young people are keeping your parish alive. Yeah, they definitely and stepped up. They were brilliant. They are brilliant. Yeah. And I know in Sabletown Clear it was the same. Yeah, we're very rural where we are, so when it came to lockdown, a lot of our JP2s are very isolated, and you know some of them wouldn't have seen any friends or anything for a number of weeks, like lots of children um, throughout the country. But we tried to keep in touch with them, to touch base as much as we could. So we had little initiatives going, like they were putting up prayers on our Facebook page, they did May altars, and then we were able to get into a position where we could get out a little bit more and we could meet in the smaller groups. They cleaned the churchyard, they painted the fence, the railings at the front, of the church. We had books that we'd used for, well, some of which we'd used for a book sale before lockdown, and they were in a position then to go around and put those in the two churches, and people could come and take them and so on. So just any little thing that gave them a little sense of, of doing something and being present as well, and as well as that, it, it helped people out, I suppose, as well. So for any priests watching, you know, they're great to paint uh, <laughs> railings. You know, it's free labour. Um, but I also like, parish is very much part of the John Paul. We can't do it without the involvement in our mm -hmm. parish. Yeah. But I know the, the social aspect as well. I know in, um, in Allen, you get very involved in the fro there, and the young people are very yeah. involved in the yeah. social as well. We do. M majority of um, young people who do... Um, Allen Parish is a huge area to cover, and we have three churches um, and no secondary school either. But um, the majority of young people who do tend to be based in Milltown. Um, they would go to the schools in Newbridge um, with the Holy Family, Sister Kate, and then um, the Patricians with Claire Malloy. So there's a great connection there with the schools. Um, but um, they would also be very involved in Froiga, and they've done a huge amount of work with Froiga. Um, with, um, they, they designed um, a remembrance garden in the church with Froiga, and most of our JP2s were involved in that as well. Um, the front part of the cemetery in Milltown um, was where... Um, unbaptized babies were buried or someone who died en route to somewhere else and they didn't know them. Um, so they put um, a little chair and a tree and um, a, a plaque to commemorate those unbaptized uh, people who were buried in that. So the young people were very, very involved, um, the JP2s, but they're also members of Froga. So there's a great connection, a great link, and uh, they've done some remarkable work yeah, in the area. That's, um, that's, that's amazing. It's really it's inspired me now to go back to my parish in Port Leash and to give my John Paul's a big <laughs> kick uh, to get going, but it's fantastic. And thank you so much for sharing your experience of being an award leader uh, with us all here and also virtually watching us. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. So now we continue our learning about what our John Paul II students have been getting up to. I know many parents are watching this evening and some of them may have been wondering why they're dropping their child off here or there and everywhere and what they've been getting up to. So it's best to hear, as they say, from the horse's mouth. So we hear now some of the testimonies from our John Paul II students who were very involved in their parish and in their society this year. Last year, the parish, I get a sense of, to put it simply, doing. I'm not just sitting down. I'm actually doing something to help people. Or maybe they just come because they want to express their faith and you're helping them to express their faith. And it's just a strong sense of 
doing and purpose. Even though it's not that hard, I got a sense of responsibility from it, especially when maybe you're looking after the younger kids, or reading, and when you read and you look up over out the whole church, and it's very daunting, but as long as you don't get it wrong, you feel very proud. Um, I've been a reader for six years, and one of the biggest parts of reading is looking out into the congregation. So during lockdown, when I was finally allowed to re-enter the church, it was one of the many weird experiences this year to see only four other people. But over the past few weeks, it's really made me appreciate having the congregation. JP2 Award has given me the opportunity to reconnect with people and to meet like-minded people from other places. Uh, me personally, I do all this because I just want to help out. I, I like to do my best to try and help out. But um, one of the things I signed up for was um, the Eucharistic Minister. In my eyes, it's all seen as one of the most important ministries. And I was really nervous. Like The entire Mass is building up to this one point. It's building up to the Communion. The training, the hardest part about the training for it, I'm not going to lie, was um, trying to remember all the terms and names. I'm a leader in our children's choir in my parish and I play guitar. Um, but since March, it's just been me and my sister singing at Mass. Um, and we really enjoy Mass. Singing with the children's and the youth choir is really good because I love music, so I get to do it more often. And it has helped me a lot with my confidence. And I've made lots of new friends through both choirs. So one of my highlights of the JP2 award was being a leader for the preparation for the confirmation class. I really enjoyed kind of just hanging out with a bunch of sixth class kids and um, playing different games and icebreakers. Another highlight was definitely um, bagpacking for a charity and getting to know new people from different schools and from my school and from different parishes as well. Um, I also got to become part of two parishes and carry out bits of my JP2 award in different parishes. Um, my family and I both went to both parishes, which was really nice. And I feel like overall, as an award, it's been a positive experience with a welcoming attitude and really let me get stuck in with every aspect of parish and social life, which I'm really grateful for. Since the church has reopened, I got to meet new people uh, welcome everyone back to the church and make sure everyone is uh, happy and safe in the church environment. For my social activity, I got to train the junior rugby team in school, gave me a new experience of uh, how to teach as well as play rugby uh, to the younger generations and the JP2 award helped me achieve this. I made some face masks to donate to the parish priest and I let him bring them to wherever he felt fit. And then afterwards, when I was making them for people, 90% of my um, money that I was taking in was going directly back into food packages and care packages for people in need. So I also really liked being a part of the St Vincent de Paul Society in my school. And um, for Christmas jumper day, I got to dress up as Santa Claus and go from class to class to collect money, which I thought was really entertaining. And I also got to dress up as an elf in my parish for Christmas Eve mass, which I loved because I got to give out free food and keep some. I was unsure at first like everyone else. I knew some people from primary school, but not many. But as soon as I got in, you know, everyone was welcoming, really nice, friendly. I, when I go to mass, I, uh, I, I didn't usually take a lot from it, but now I do. You know, one day I went into Mass and I was having an argument with my brother and I was thinking, oh, how I'm in the right and this and that. And then the local priest mentioned how you should always forgive your brother and look on the other side. And that really struck a chord with me, how God knew my problem and just saw how it happened on the day, you know. My problem was talked about and I was told what to do. So I always wanted to help out and do my best for the parish ever since then. And you meet loads of new people. If you're ever just having a tough day or school's too much, you can just come down to the parish and do something small, whether it be just clean up or give out communion or steward and talk to loads of new people. And it really does wonders for the head if you're stressed about leaving cert or just life in general. JP2 Award has helped me start on the journey of figuring out what my faith means to me. I already know that it means walking into the parish and feeling welcome and wanted and at home. It's a space away from home where I can get a bit of headspace and talk to someone and there is not a time I've ever come here and not felt safe. The, the real outreach into society is so, so great to see some of our young people coming from that background of faith and reaching out the likes of care packages, reaching out with Broga, 
reaching out or even just painting their local surroundings and cleaning up their town. It's absolutely fantastic and well done to all the boys and girls. So we're going to hear now from one of our recipients of the award this year, a young lady from the parish of Ballon, uh, Shauna Downey, is about to receive her Papal Cross Award and we're going to hear how she got involved in the award and the initiatives that she has undertaken uh, during this past year. So Shauna, uh, you're very welcome. Thank you very much for having me. What, uh, I'm, I'm so uh, fascinated to find out how did you find out about the John Paul Award and what attracted you to it? So like many others in their parish, they've always seen the older generation go through it and think, wow, you know, that looks something amazing to be involved in. And I was fortunate enough to be one of those people who saw it being um, conducted in front of me um, through my parish. And actually my brother also conducted the award. And I think it's something amazing because everyone can do it, but it's just the impact that comes from it as well. So not only are you giving something, but you're getting so much as well. But I think it's just an amazing thing to be involved in and will you know, serve you right, right through your life, so yeah. Excellent. And then, so during your time, like you're, you're about to receive your Papal Cross Award this evening, but uh, you did your Gold Award last year, I believe. So what, like, what, what things did you get involved in your parish and also in, in your society and social aspects? Yeah, so um, thanks to my award leader for his support and everything, I also actually managed to continue my weekly reading at um, my church. So even through the webcam, um, it was lovely because it gave people who were at home the sense of normality and that, you know, we can still continue and with our things such as mass, you know, not to stop because I think that's what was most important was the sense of hope and to keep it alive in all our activities um, such as reading and I personally got so much from that. Um, I really enjoy reading, however, I think it's something that you can always build up on and always get better at. So, yeah, I really enjoy that and that was one of the things in my parish that I really enjoy doing. Excellent. And also, as you do the Papal Cross, you know, you're kind of asked to take on an extra responsibility, or actually maybe to go that extra mile. And I know you had a great initiative in your parish, especially during this pandemic. Yes, yeah, so actually two years ago now when I was in transition year, I had the idea of setting up an initiative in, in contact with the Sacred Heart Hospital. And so uh, this would entail basically um, bridging a relationship with the elderly residents in the Sacred Heart and what I wanted and hoped to do was that they could teach us something that they really enjoyed or they had an interest in, such as a piece of history or showing us a movie that they really thought um, spoke so many words to them. And then on the other hand, we could teach them a bit about technology today or how to work something. Um, now, unfortunately, as we all know, COVID came along, but I thought this is the perfect opportunity to show people not to sit down, but stand up and continue doing the amazing things that young people do today. So in doing this, I changed my initiative, uh, which is called Bridging Generations, and changed it into a pen pal initiative. So in doing so, I grabbed some of my friends, and they're, they're so good. They, they were more than happy to help out. And we all um, did a pen pal initiative in contact with the Sacred Heart. So each student would be paired up with a resident and then as the weeks went on, we'd send letters um, back and forth. And it was just so amazing because you could even just tell by the cards that they were making how much it meant to them and how much time and effort they really put into it. And I think that's the big thing that came from it is that it might seem so simple to us, but on the other hand, it's you know incredible because even during isolation, you know they, they didn't see much of the outside. So. I think that was something really big to come from it. And um, even as you mentioned there in the start, like John Paul, he was trying to speak words of love to the youth. So I think this is a great way to resemble the youth uh, words of love and thanks to the elderly generation, because after all, they paved the way for us. And it's, it's important to go back and say thanks, because you know I think from time to time, we really need to remember what they've been through and what they can teach us. So yeah. Wow. And I'm just I'm reminded like the, the the spirit of the John Paul Award. It's not about the self. Mm -hmm. It really is about that reaching out and being part of your parish, being part of your community. And that's such a fantastic initiative. Thank you. And well done for uh, for much. coming up with it. And congratulations for Thank receiving you. your award, <laughs> well deserved award. So Shana, Thank you very congratulations. Much. Thank you. So now I'm going to invite forward someone who knows a lot more about the John Paul Award than I do. 
someone who I think we all know, uh, both here in the church, uh, in the cathedral, but also those watching. Uh, and Katrina Kelly is going to come forward and say a few words of appreciation, uh, especially to our ward leaders, but also to all uh, 403 young people who are receiving the award this evening. Good evening, everybody. I got off very lightly this year, thanks to David. Um, my job tonight is very little. Uh, I'm not going to be here for long, but it's a big task what I have to do. I have to name every single one of our very special, very important, very necessary award leaders. I'm very privileged to do so. So while we can't name all 403 award recipients tonight, we can acknowledge the groups that they come from. We're all part of a parish family, a school family, a JP2 family, led by an award leader, whether it's in your school or in your parish. So when you hear your award leader's name, I hope you cheer at home, take a photo, send it in to us at Candle Youth, and we'll share them afterwards. Um, they'll be very quiet and very well behaved here, but at home you can be as loud as you like. So in Allen Parish, you heard from her earlier on today, is Roisin Malone. She's been the award leader there for much longer than I've been in this job, um, and I've learned an awful lot from her throughout the years. So she has a group there this year receiving gold and papal cross, all from Allen Parish. And then we have Ballon Parish, Jerry Marr, the leader of Shauna, who you just heard from there now. And Jerry works alongside the schools that the Ballon uh, parishioners go to. So St. Leo's College and Knock Beg this year are represented in the Ballon Parish group. So Anna Shields is the leader in St. Leo's and Chris Conway in Knock Beg. And they're gold and paper cross this year again. In Cara Parish, her first year as award leader, Hannah Divney, she came to the award as well. She might be here next year speaking. We'll talk about that later, Hannah. Um, she came through Holy Family, and Sister Kate is a, a powerhouse, and, and we'd be lost without her in Holy Family Secondary School. Margaret Humphreys looks after the girls in St. Mary's College in Nace. So the two girls go to two different schools, bronze and silver awards for them this year. Philip Lawler couldn't be with us this evening. He was supposed to be interviewed earlier on, but couldn't be with us. So we're thinking of him this evening. Um, he works with Cathedral Parish here in Carlow. Uh, and he obviously is, has a lot to do with all the Carlow schools. So Anya in St. Leo's, Chris in Knockbeg, Laura Walsh, who's represented here tonight as well from the CBS Boys, Fiona Watchorn in Presentation College Aska, and Colin Cummins in the Grail Colosta. And they have gold and paper cross, lots of recipients again this year. Anne-Marie Dolan couldn't be here this evening. She's watching at home, along with all the boys from Congleswood College. They're all watching together, I believe, and they have gold and paper cross. And some of those lads are from Clane Parish as well, but most are outside the diocese, but very much part of our Calair Nuckland family. Kalosh to Isagon, Port Arlegan. Uh, Catherine is here, Catherine Hooban and Katrina Foy, doing a fantastic job with the great guidance of Sister Maureen, of course, um, in Colossi de Sagon. Um, all gold medals and one paper cross this year. Fantastic group, and they've already told me that they're signed up 30 more for next year. So it's fantastic to hear um, how they're working well with Joe O'Neill, Father Joe O'Neill, in, in their parish as well this year. Gwail Colossi de Carhalop themselves, Colm O'Cummeen. Colin Cummins, as I call him, um, all gold awards this year. And they're, again, some of them are from outside the diocese. And having that contact in school, linking everybody up with their parish, even when they're from a Thai or Castle Dermot, making sure they feel welcome in Kildare and as well. And all gold medals from there, too. Ashley Farrell works very closely alongside him with Aska Benicari in Ireland. She's a dab hand at the award now as well. She could be here with Hannah next year speaking about her experience as an award leader before that getting her gold and her paper cross medal too. And of course, they work closely with Philip. They, their youth groups paired up this year and did great work. And Liz Dunn again in Lachlan Parish. Haywood Community School. And uh, we have Shona Colleen, who's the chaplain there, doing fantastic work, all gold medals. The parishes represented there are Abbey Leagues, Bandy Kill, um, and even outside the diocese again with Castle Comer and Bally Adams as well within our own, just further down the road for them. Holy Family Secondary in Newbridge have a big group this year. I'm sure the girls are screaming at this point. I hope so. Charlotte couldn't be here, and she's the parish award leader, um, doing a great job in her first year as award leader. Again, she was supposed to be interviewed tonight. They were dropping like flies. We lost them all. Um, but she's at home watching in as well, and she's doing fantastic work with the girls and the guys in, in Newbridge Parish to all of the schools there. 
But Holy Family, they're guided very well by Sister Kate, by Helena, and by Helena O'Callaghan and Niall Levy as well. They're doing a fantastic job with all of them, representing Newbridge Parish, Cara, and Suncoff Parish especially, and lots of Allen too. And some months Revan thrown in there as well. Um, we have Kill Parish then, Jean Roach and Margaret Humphreys, who you heard from before. She also is the award leader in St. Mary's and Nace, but she works in her own parish too, with the young people from there, all gold medals this year, and they couldn't be here tonight either. Monst Revan Parish, and Father Liam is here, I see him, I'll get to talk to him later. And Fiona Farrell, Pauline Murphy and Colette Walsh doing fantastic work this year, a massive group. And um, silver, gold and paper cross medals all around this year. And Caroline Murray, who's based in St Paul's in Monst Revan, working very closely with them all year as well. Again, they feed into some of the other schools like Holy Family and Colossi Sagan as well, all working so tightly together. Anne Moore is the chaplain in Mount Rath Community School. Again, she looks after ones outside the diocese and within the diocese, has to work with two programmes, and we're blessed to have her working in a Mount Rath Community School. Bronze, silver, gold, and paper cross medals this year, and within our diocese, Mount Rath Parish is there, and Ballyfin as well. Nace Salins and Two Mile House, they're very blessed to have the fantastic Patricia O'Neill joining them this year on the youth ministry team, and Hilda Campbell, who's joining us in Faith Development Services, have done a fantastic job with this group of silver, gold, and paper cross medals, covering Nace, Salins, and Two Mile House. And Grace Keevans and Caroline Quinn, always a constant support in the parish, couldn't be here this evening, the first one they've missed, I think, um, and blessed to have a great parish youth team going forward with Father Liam in Nace Parish. Then we have Patricia in secondary in Newbridge as well, Look, working closely with the girls, they love that. Um, and with Charlotte in, Charlotte in the parish. Claire Molloy is their award leader for many years and they're blessed to have her. She works so closely with them and looks after them so well. Bronze, silver, gold and paper cross medals across the board for all of those and they'll be celebrating in their parish. Siobhan Kyo did a great year's work with Portish Parish last year, working very closely with Sean O'Neill from Portish College as well and Anne Byrne from School Creek Street, and Caroline Brennan, who's on a return to leave now, but still very much a JP2 award leader from home, working with the Port Leash Parish, um, with a fantastic group this year, gold and paper cross across the board. Prez de La Salle in Bagnestown, Jenny Marr is there, Miss Marr from Prez de La Salle, but working very closely with Pamela Whelan and Jessica Dixon in your parish. Uh, bronze, silver, gold, paper cross from Bagnestown, from Michel, Lachlan, Paul Sangor's Bridge, the, these girls are tying all of these young people together through um, links with the school and with the parish. But again, there's no boundaries in this award. Where you feel is your parish, that's your parish. And um, Gary Moore is looking after the girls from Road. Fantastic girls, um, seven recipients this year. Gold awards all round for them, Road and Convalo as well. Anne Byrne, we mentioned before, works in School Creek Street, um, but very much a parish leader as well with all Port Leash Parish especially with the Pray and Play group as well, which I know they're missing this year. Um, she works alongside Breda Oxley as well, who looks after the Strad Valley Parish. So always teachers in schools and award leaders in parish working very closely together with the young people from Mount Melick, Port Leash, Munster Evan, Mount Rath, um, and various ones outside the diocese as well, bronze, silver, gold, and paper cross. And we have, who we heard from before as well, we have Michelle Cosgrove, Anne Smith, and Ailish Cox, who are the three award leaders for the last two years in Staplestown, Kulira Parish. They have 21 recipients this year, gold and papal cross, all from the parish, and they adopted a girl from Allen as well, from Roisin, they share her, um, but they feel very welcome in both. Um, gold and papal cross doing fantastic work over there, their second year in the award. St Mary's Eden Derry, we have Roisin McCann and Grainne McDonnell, and a parish award leader as well is Martin Tyrrell. And they work very closely with Father PJ up in Eden Derry, but Father John with Carberry as well. And anyone that would like to take part in ministry, there's no boundaries up there at all. They're very much inclusive, and it's a lovely family feel to the JP2 family up there. Um, and all gold, loads of gold and bronze medals for them this year. And as I mentioned before, Chris Conway looks after the boys in Lockbeg College who come from many different parishes. If they don't have an award leader, he's their contact. So. That's a suggestion to a few parishes that might need an award leader. Come and talk to us and we'll get you involved. And the silver and gold medals coming from Knockbeg this year, from Aska, Benacary, Grey Cullen, and Bagginstown and Strad Valley. And last but not least, we have 
Suncroft Parish, who the ladies couldn't be here this evening, Elizabeth Smith and Margaret Devlin. Margaret's first year working with Suncroft Parish, and they worked very closely with the Holy Family and PBS at Newbridge College as well. Um, and they do great work up there, fantastic young people every single year without fail because of the great leadership they have and support structures in their parish. So all of these award leaders, I hope I didn't miss anyone. Um, it's so easy to talk about you, it's so easy to talk to you because it's all true. I don't have to butter anything up, as my mother would say, because it's all real, it's all there. Very genuine and sincere, heartfelt thanks from myself to, to you all for sticking with young people throughout this very difficult year. It's been a special year, though I think they'll never forget it, but I hopefully for the right reasons too. So while all the young people are at home and you are here, they will, the award leaders will bring home your medals and your certificates and make sure that they are presented in the most special way possible, where they should be, in your parish, in your church, as a JP2 group presented to you by your award leaders, your parish priests, those who, without the, their support, their help, you might not have made it through this medal, this program. So um, at this point, I'll ask everyone to give yourselves a round of applause at home and here, please. Just settle down now at home, please, for a minute, because it's Bishop Dennis. It's his time to shine now. He's coming forward. We are so blessed to have the support of Bishop Dennis here. He's giggling away. <laughs> and we're so blessed to have him at all of our youth events. He's such a great support. Um, and uh, he has a, many words of wisdom he wants to share with you this evening. So please be very attentive and settle down at home now, please. And here. They're very well behaved tonight, Bishop, aren't they? They really are. <laughs> Let's give a big hand to Katrina. Well done. <laughs> Friends, we gather in this beautiful cathedral this evening to honour 403 of you, recipients of the Pope John Paul II Award. 403 coming from 35 of our parishes, 25 of our secondary schools. I'm so aware, as Katrina was speaking, this only tells part of the story. On top of the 25 secondary schools, there are eight other schools involved in the awards. And on top of the 35 parishes, there are four parishes outside our diocese involved in tonight's awards. I want to pay particular tribute because it goes well beyond our diocese, coordinated by Katrina, to each participating school, to every parish, I say thanks. Behind Katrina, you heard their names on the roll call a few moments ago. There are 50 award leaders, of whom 12 are on their first year, their first full year. To Katrina and to every award leader, I say a huge thanks. You know by now I love statistics. They tell a narrative, they tell the story, where our school, our parish, fits into something much bigger. Let's take a moment to look at the dust and figures, the stats over the past 11 years. 15 ceremonies over 11 years, awarding 2,970 young people. That's as close to get to 3,000 as you'll ever get. The awards were launched in Derry in 2006. One of the first dioceses outside Derry to introduce the awards was here, Kildare and Lachlan, in 2009, with the first awards presented in 2011. This is our very first virtual ceremony because of COVID-19. I want to thank all of you for being with us and for staying with us this evening. Normally, you would be meeting up with your friends, your school pals, in a kind of nervous excitement about your name being called out and your particular award. Friends, pals, and classmates who are on the Pope John Paul II journey with you. Normally, you'd be sitting in your parish group and I would walk around and greet you all. But tonight, you're with your family and I hope they're around with you to support you because you deserve every support. 
Normally, I'd be looking at smiling, excited faces who had completed their hours, their project, their journal, and were deemed worthy by their award leader of a particular award, bronze, silver, gold, or papal cross. Remember, it's not what you receive. It's that you receive. It's that you participated, that you took part. You finished the race, you donned the jersey, you rolled up your sleeves. And tonight, you're being awarded for just doing that. Normally, you would be participating in many events at parish level, but I'm so aware that this has been anything but a normal time, a normal year. Participants who would have normally led Sunday school or children's liturgy had less opportunity to do so because of COVID-19. Participants who would have helped with sacramental programs like confirmation, faith friends, First Holy Communion preparation at a parish level were completely restricted this year because of COVID-19. Participants who would have gone to Lourdes, Taizé, Medjugorje, even to Knock. A papal cross group, I understand, were due to travel to do a stage at the Camino with their leaders. But no one got to travel this year on any pilgrimage because of COVID-19. And yet there are still awards. Still awards. In fact, more awards this year than ever. 403. Because your leaders, under Katrina's coordination, have revised the programme as it applies to parish and schools. John Paul awardees are now experts on sanitisation. They're professionals in the mechanics of fogging. They're geniuses on systems management as they steward the regular congregation and do so sensitively and respectfully. Overnight, they have come to understand the term capacity when it comes to churches. Overnight, they have been inventful, offering outdoor seating for latecomers. Maybe they've even supplied the good weather we've enjoyed in recent months. Overnight, they've introduced Facebook Live and its benefits into mainstream liturgy. For these things, and much more, you are this evening receiving your awards. Our ceremony, friends, falls on the feasts of the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. The name Michael means who is like God. Gabriel means God's strength, and Raphael means God heals. It's interesting, we're told, that the archangels are incorporeal beings. COVID has, in many respects, made all of us into incorporeal beings. As we are introduced to Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Devices that allow us to work, socialize, and operate incorporeally, a bit like the archangels. I'm not sure as holy, but a bit like them. Michael is often represented as a warrior in armour, wielding a sword, protecting us from anything awkward, anything that isn't good for us. Gabriel is the messenger. He tells Mary that she's going to be the mother of Jesus and frequently appears to Joseph in his dreams. Raphael is the one who brings healing and who seems to bring people together who are good for one another. We love our families. We thank Raphael for introducing us to our pals, people that are special to us in life. Maybe the people we teamed up, maybe the people we met on our Pope John Paul II award journey. The award allows you to live your faith and to witness to that faith in front of your peers and the wider community your parishioners, and your classmates at school. Not everyone gets parish, but I think Pope John Paul II awardees 
understand it from a young age. My prayer is always that you will stay with Parish, that you will stay connected long after the credits have been achieved and the awards have been presented. Being a JP2 young person is more than just leading a Sunday liturgy. It's more than just sanitizing a church or cathedral before the next Mass. It's more than even traveling to Lourdes, and all these things are so commendable. But being a JP2 young person is understanding what parish is, what parish involvement, social responsibility mean, and why by your involvement, by your inclusion, by your participation, you make room for many more to become involved and part of our faith story. An image that caught my attention earlier this month from the front cover of the Sacred Heart Messenger magazine, the eye of the dog focused on the church webcam streaming on the laptop, focused on the computer screen. I encourage you to stay focused. There's a danger, because so much we do is done now virtually, is that your generation of young people could distance themselves from the church building, and in doing so, the practice of their faith. Sunday might get lost between camogie, hurling, football, chilling out, and lunch. I encourage you to stay connected to your faith in these pandemic times. You're all worth more than gold, silver, bronze, even the Papal Cross Award. You're worth more because of your engagement, your involvement, your participation in these awards. I wish you every blessing. And once again, I thank sincerely your priests, our wonderful priests, who encourage you. Your teachers, our wonderful teachers in our schools who do so much on your behalf and inspire you. Your award leaders, our wonderful award leaders mentioned earlier, who mentor you. And of course, Katrina, who coordinates this program and doesn't leave a stone unturned to make sure this ceremony goes like clockwork. She sent me an email this morning at eight minutes past one, and she wasn't socializing all night. She was still working, getting ready for this day. With Katrina, I also want to acknowledge Robert Norton. Both of them, on behalf of the diocese, do huge work inspiring young people. Hilda now with them on that secondary school profile team of reaching out to those in our secondary schools. Because young people in our diocese are encouraged through the involvement of the team at Faith Development Services and through the involvement of the reward leaders to live their faith and to be a real part of their parish and our diocese. I thank you very much and I'm going to call now Katrina, as I want to just appreciate Katrina, your involvement. If you come forward, this isn't part of the script, but that's the wonderful thing about live streams. Bishop Dennis just said that Katrina never leaves any stone unturned. Katrina forgot to mention her own parish group, actually. <laughs> Sorry, Father Dunphy, I noticed second I got down and I had a glance at my phone to check the time and I saw 72 messages from my JP2 saying what about us <laughs> so I am very sorry to the Great Cullen Collection Parish group there's 51 participants this year we'll make a fuss of them next week they're getting bronze silver gold and paper cross and probably a new award leader next week so thanks so much <laughs> So thank you very much to Bishop Dennis and of course to Katrina. Um, Bishop Dennis for your very inspiring words as always, encouraging us all on this journey 
of faith, not just our young people, but all across our diocese. I too have received emails from Katrina at half one in the morning, and I normally look at my phone and say, she needs a life. But I know she does great work in the diocese, even if she, even if she, even if she forgets her own. So the last part of the night is for me to thank everyone who made tonight possible. Uh, firstly, to thank uh, Bill, Father Bill Kemi and his team and I Catholic for making this virtual ceremony possible and for all those who joined us virtually this, uh, this evening. I think I said this afternoon earlier on, um, I must still be um, lacking sleep because of those emails at half one in the morning. But we thank all uh, uh, Father Bill and his team in I Catholic. To thank uh, Philip Lawler and all the team here in the cathedral uh, for the use of this beautiful setting. Of course, this is the mother church in our diocese, so it's very fitting that we gather here this evening to celebrate our young people. To thank, of course, all the award leaders who are gathered here who made the journey down to Carlo. Thank you all very much for coming, and thank you for bringing home now to your parish your awards, and you bring with, with your awards not only the awards, the bronze, the silver, the gold, the paper cross, but you also bring the best wishes of all of us here in the diocese to your recipients. Of course, thank you to Katrina for all the work that she's done, the immense work that she has put in to the, not just the ceremony, but of course to the award and the many hours that um, don't go unnoticed, Katrina. So thank you very much. Of course, thank you to Bishop Dennis for all the work that he does. He really is a true shepherd of our diocese who encourages all of us along the way, along that journey of faith. And of course, our last thank you, or before our last thank you, we thank the parents of all those who are receiving wards this evening. Without the parents, there will be no lifts, there will be no gatherings, there will be no carpooling, there will be no getting the kids to churches all across the diocese, to social gatherings all across. So to the parents, uh, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts as well. You enable, you are the first teachers of the faith to your children, and you have enabled them so much to grow on that faith journey. And lastly, we thank all 403 of our young people who received their award this evening and will receive their award physically at a later date in their parish. You have inspired not only all of us gathered here this evening, here physically in the church, but also those who are watching virtually. I know from all over the world, I know Kildare and Lachlan is often envied because of all the work that the young people do in their parishes. So thank you for giving witness to the love that Jesus has for you and to the love that John Paul has inspired in each of us. And I think you all deserve another Bula Bus. Well done. <laughs> so last but not least, again, I invite um, Bishop Dennis to come forward to lead us in a very special blessing as we close out this ceremony. Let us pray. O St. John Paul II, from the window of heaven, grant us your blessing. Bless the church that you loved, served, and guided, courageously leading it along the paths of the world in order to bring Jesus to everyone and everyone to Jesus. Bless all our young people, virtually connected with us this evening, who were your great passion, and bless all those who guide and care for them. Bless our award leaders. Help the young people to dream, help them to look up high again, to find the light that illuminates the path of life here on earth. O St. John Paul II from heaven's window, where we see you next to Mary and the archangels, send God's blessing down upon all of us. And may Almighty God bless us all this night. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you all, and thank you so much, and thanks to Father David for emceeing us and linking us through the whole ceremony so beautifully. God bless you all and enjoy your little celebration at home. God bless.
So again, thank you all very much for joining us physically and virtually. I hope you enjoyed our ceremony this evening, and we can't wait to see some of the photographs from our young people as they now return, as the war leaders now return, as you now give out um, very much and with our blessings and our best wishes the awards to all your young people, and we are already looking forward to welcoming you back next year, hopefully physically, in our cathedral. So good night, and God bless you all.
especially for this evening. So we, we, um, we're going to take some uh, socially distanced photographs. So it's the order of, uh, that you see on the screen. So Bishop Dennis, do you want to come forward? He's